Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including Tesla's latest massive recall, Model Y losing its tax credit, Cybertruck production ramping, and more. So let's get into it. And a special thanks to Novium for sponsoring a portion of this video. First up today, let's talk about Tesla's massive recall of 2 million vehicles. The news is consumed with this huge problem for all Tesla owners, and I've been asked by multiple people, non-Tesla owners in particular, how this affects Tesla, my car, and my channel. Well, in short, not much. This isn't to say that this recall means nothing, but just that it's not what it sounds like. A sweeping Tesla recall sounds like a huge deal for the company, since that would probably mean that 2 million Tesla owners need to bring in their car for service to get something fixed. And the unfortunate thing is, if you only read the headlines, then that is what this is. But the remedy is very simple. This recall covers certain Model S, Model X, Model 3, and Model Y vehicles equipped with autopilot. Quote, in certain circumstances, when auto steer is engaged, the prominence and scope of the feature's controls may not be sufficient to prevent driver misuse. This comes after a long NHTSA probe into Tesla's autopilot system, which was done along with Tesla over the course of two years. They found that in certain scenarios, if one, quote, does not maintain responsibility for vehicle operation and is unprepared to intervene as necessary or fails to recognize when auto steer is canceled or not engaged, there may be an increased risk of a crash. These are definitely important things, but the big piece here many seem to want to leave at the bottom of an article is that Tesla is fixing this with, quote, a free over-the-air software update to impacted vehicles. This unfortunately happens with every Tesla recall for the most part, and it points to an issue at hand with the NHTSA terminology. All of these news agencies are accurately reporting a recall because a software update is not distinguished in any way from one that requires an in-person fix or even for your car to be bought back by the manufacturer. They are all a recall. So many think that the term software recall should be put into place. That way it's known that Tesla did not need to fix something on all of their cars physically, but it was very easy for owners to do so. In fact, it took no time whatsoever. Most owners are just gonna get a notification, click install and be good to go. Tesla recently responded to a Washington Post article about where autopilot should be used, pointing to crashes the system had. Their tweet says, quote, We at Tesla believe that we have a moral obligation to continue improving our already best-in-class safety systems. At the same time, we also believe it is morally indefensible not to make these systems available to a wider set of customers, given the incontrovertible data that shows it is saving lives and preventing injury. Regulators around the globe have a duty to protect consumers, and the Tesla team looks forward to continuing our work with them towards our common goal of eliminating as many deaths and injuries as possible on our roadways. From there, they include many facts like the safety of autopilot per mile compared to general crash data, how their systems are strictly SAE level two and much more, and point to their autopilot page, which details these features in depth. The main emphasis seems to be that Tesla is clear that as with all autopilot features, you must be in control of your vehicle pay attention to its surroundings and be ready to take immediate action, including braking. These are also things you have to agree to on screen before turning on these systems in the first place. In any case, changes here are incoming with software version 2023.44.30. Quote, improved visibility of driver monitoring warning alerts on the touchscreen by increasing the text size and moving the notifications to a more prominent position. This is for Model 3 and Y. Then, quote, increase the strictness of driver attentiveness requirements when using autopilot and approaching traffic lights and stop signs off highway. Introduced a suspension policy that will restrict auto steer usage for one week if improper usage is detected. Improper use is when you or another driver of your vehicle receive five forced autopilot disengagement engagements, and then they reiterate, you are the driver. As the driver, you must be vigilant to the road, keep your hands on the wheel, and be ready to intervene to maintain safety. I'll add, please listen to this. These are impressive systems, but they are still very much in beta. You're responsible to take over if something happens. The cabin camera is being used for driver inattentiveness, which looks to be new for the Model S and X, and those are the main changes here. Previously, there was no autopilot suspension system in place, but there was one for FSD. Now this system is pretty clear in what it requires. Again, five forced autopilot disengagements will get a suspension. Quote, a disengagement is when the autopilot system disengages for the remainder of a trip after the driver receives several audio and visual warnings for inattentiveness. Additionally, use of any handheld devices while using autopilot is not allowed. It's unclear if this is simply telling you that this is the case or if the cabin camera will actually detect this and issue a strike. 
This is an important update, and hopefully it will lead to people better utilizing their autopilot systems in a safe manner that increases the safety of these systems long term and aligns with regulators. The better it can go now as well, the better these can improve long term and lead to a system that doesn't actually require supervision. That's Tesla's long term goal here. At the same time, it points out that there should be a different name, since this is a regulation required software update and the car is not being recalled in the traditional sense. With this software version comes a lot of stuff though. FSD beta version 11.4.9 is coming in the same version with lots of changes, improvements, and upgrades to the system. And then this also includes the holiday update features. This brings alternate routes when driving, custom lock sounds, Castle Doombad, rear gaming for cars that have a rear screen, Apple Podcasts, rear passenger headphones, Tesla Arcade updates, automatic 911 calls when airbags deploy, speed cameras on route, trip planner in the app, more cameras in the camera view, a red shading blind spot warning on the blind spot camera, a new light show, shuffle and title, profile images for Apple Music and Spotify, charging location filters, and then the big one, high fidelity park assist. This is a 3D reconstruction of your surroundings while parking, and hopefully will be a good alternative to a 360 camera view, which Tesla has never delivered. We'll have to see, but all owners should be getting this update shortly. Before we get any further, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Novium. Novium makes high-end pens that defy gravity using no electricity. With the holidays coming up, they would make a great gift for science and tech enthusiasts. This pen is truly a work of art and falls right in line with the vision of innovators like Tesla and SpaceX. Novium's uniquely designed hover pens float in their stands, are refillable, and make the perfect desk decoration. I love the way it stays perfectly balanced while it spins. On top of looking extremely cool though, they're the optimal writing pen. The Hover Pen Interstellar Edition won Times Award for one of the best inventions of 2022. This one sits at a 23.5 degree angle, mimicking the angle of the Earth's axis. It comes in Space Black, Starlight Silver, Mars Magma, and Neptune Blue. Premium editions are 18 karat gold plated and have a real meteorite shard embedded inside of them. Then the future edition looks like a rocket and can come in a two-in-one fountain and rollerball combo with an interchangeable tip. To check out these amazing pens for yourself or gift one to the space enthusiast in your life this holiday season, click the link in the description below, then use my code RyanShaw to get a 10% discount and free worldwide shipping on all hover pens. That includes the Interstellar edition as well as the future and classic. Next up today, I detailed fully in my last video how the Model 3 will be entirely losing its tax credit come 2024 for all trims except performance. This is due to battery sourcing and the fact that these strict requirements are coming faster than companies like Tesla can scale battery supply that complies with its rules. For 2024, this will create an interesting situation for the Model 3 since the performance still will qualify and the Model Y was supposed to qualify as well. Well, now it looks like it may not be the case. Tesla is beginning to signal that along with the rear-wheel drive and long-range Model 3, the Model Y is likely to lose part of its credit. Their website was updated to say, customers who take delivery of a qualified new Tesla and meet all federal requirements are eligible for a tax credit up to $7,500, reductions likely after December 31st. That could indicate that it's reducing by half to $3,750, but all of this is pending federal guidance, which we won't know for sure until 2024. Interestingly, Tesla's current website for the Model 3 currently says its credit is disappearing entirely, but for the Model Y, it no longer mentions an end date. This seems to change every couple days, and it really is Tesla responding to their views of the IRA's guidance. So in some ways, we don't actually know. The only thing we do know is that something will change in 2024. Right now, Tesla believes the Model Y may keep its credit, but if you're counting on this credit, it could be a good reason to buy before the end of the year when it's guaranteed. Tesla usually has end of quarter sales pushes, and right now they're offering six months of supercharging and inventory discounts. The timing could make sense for you, as anything could change in 2024. For example, even the Ford Mustang Mach-E is likely seeing its credit cut in half next year. I'll be sure to keep you posted, but always be sure to pay attention to what is true IRS guidance versus analysts or Tesla's best guess. At the end of the day, it can function as a sales incentive for Tesla customers, and then come 2024, Tesla could shift battery sourcing around to make their cars qualify again shortly after they lose their credit. 
Next up today, Tesla is slowly ramping up production of the Cybertruck in Texas, but the progress is impressive to see. Many customers are awaiting a delivery date coming up between December and March for the Founders Series Cybertruck, and Joe Tegtmeyer caught around 50 Cybertrucks parked at Giga Texas. 19 of these are in the outbound lot preparing to deliver to customers, and it should mean that true customer deliveries, beyond those handpicked for the event, will be coming shortly. At the same time, the Cybertruck parts catalog has shown up online, showing us some confirmed features and surprisingly low repair pricing. The front camera is heated and has a washer. The rear one doesn't have a washer, but I do imagine they will need to add this since that's functioning as your rear view mirror a lot of the time. For pricing, the entire wiper arm and blade assembly is $165. A replacement wiper blade is $75. The windshield, which is the largest ever, is $1,900. The side windows range from $200 to $265. And the powered front trunk with fascia is around $2,845. The 35-inch tires are $470 each, and then a front fender is about $550. This is more than one for the F-150 Lightning for comparison, but it won't require paint, which should reduce instant installation cost and labor by a lot. That's part of Tesla's pitch with this truck, so it will be exciting and interesting to see this in practice once they start needing repairs. Next up today, some updates on the ongoing Tesla labor disputes in Europe. In late October, 120 Swedish Tesla mechanics went on strike after Tesla refused to grant collective bargaining rights to their employees. This is pretty standard practice in Sweden, where most employers have collective bargaining agreements with their workers. These Tesla employees were not asking for an increase in wages, like we saw with the recent UAW strikes in America, but rather just for Tesla to accept the principle of collective bargaining. Tesla, however, was unwilling to budge, as we'd expect. In response, the European Automotive Workers Union, IF Metal, has called upon other unions across Scandinavia to join them in their collective action against Tesla. Sympathy strikes first began cropping up all across Sweden. Swedish dock workers turned away deliveries of Tesla vehicles in their ports, postal workers were refusing to deliver license plates to Tesla owners, and many electricians stopped performing maintenance work on the vehicles. While Tesla was locked in a lawsuit with the Swedish government over the license plate situation, union action against Tesla began in other countries. Dock workers in Denmark announced that starting December 20th, they would be blocking all delivery of Tesla vehicles into their country. Unions in Norway have followed suit, announcing that they would be blocking the import of any Tesla vehicles destined for delivery in Sweden. The same is happening in Finland as well. Tesla has become a bit notorious as being a non-union workplace across the globe, but they have been receiving a lot of pushback from major unions to allow their workers to join. Tesla and Elon Musk have not had the best relationship with these unions, but this ongoing situation in Europe is a bit different. For one, while US union membership has been in a decline, about 10.1% of US workers were a member of a union in 2022, Northern Europe has a very different attitude towards labor relations. For example, in Sweden, the country where this conflict started, 9 out of 10 workers there are a member of a union. In Denmark, that number is 8 out of 10. With that mere fact alone, unions are a much stronger presence there than in the US, something that Tesla has less experience dealing with by comparison. The chair of Denmark's transport union had this to say, quote, We have some labor market agreements in the Nordic region, and you have to comply with them if you want to run a business here. Union and workforce disputes are a pretty common thing in the auto industry, and it's something that automakers will have to deal with at some point or another. We felt that firsthand in the US with the long and complicated UAW strikes recently. While Tesla wasn't directly impacted by the UAW strike, in this particular case, it may be growing a bit further than Tesla is used to. If it isn't resolved soon, it could have a pretty big impact on their ability to do business in Scandinavia and Europe as a whole. Next up today, one car rental company is about to eliminate Teslas from their entire fleet. Car rental companies around the world have been electrifying their fleets over the last few years, but their plans have been running into some snags. Hertz recently announced that they would be cutting back on their EV plans due to unexpectedly high costs to repair, only a few years after buying 100,000 Teslas. While Hertz is cutting back on EVs across the board, one European car rental company is specifically singling out Tesla. Sixt is a German company that has built the second largest rental car fleet in Europe, as well as the second largest in the US. While Tesla's dropping retail prices have been great for customers, it has fleet buyers a little nervous. Bloomberg reported that a major source of losses for the company has been the rapidly depreciating values of their stock cars. The company has cited quality collision repair costs and residual values as concerns for them, and as a result, they plan to sell off their entire Tesla fleet. Sixt has lofty goals to make their entire fleet of around 250,000 vehicles be 90% electric by the end of the decade. In lieu of Tesla, Sixt has chosen Chinese manufacturer BYD as their primary EV supplier. 
They have committed to a purchase of 100,000 BYD vehicles to fill their fleet, with lower cost of purchase and ease of repair being major sticking points for them. Outside the US, Tesla isn't the only EV manufacturer. There are a lot of others ramping up production and overall quality that are turning heads in the industry, and BYD is a major one. If Tesla wants to keep these large customers, like rental fleets, they may have to adjust some of their strategy and address the kind of concerns that these companies do have. I am curious to see how you can get to 90% all electric with a US fleet without using a Tesla. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. A number of EV manufacturers, including Tesla, have experimented with the idea of battery swapping in order to speed up charging stops. Imagine you're on a road trip in your EV and you're running low on charge. Instead of stopping to charge for 20 to 40 minutes, you would pull into a stall that would swap out your entire battery for another, freshly charged one, and then be back on your way within minutes. Tesla talked about this technology years ago, but they claimed consumer demand wasn't high enough, so the complicated project was shelved in favor of increased supercharger rollout. Chinese EV maker Neo has had some success with battery swapping, but the tech is so far limited to China. Now, automaker Stellantis, in partnership with a company called Ample, has just announced a major breakthrough that could be a game changer for battery changing technology. Rather than swapping out an entire battery pack, which could weigh up to 1,000 pounds, machinery works quickly to swap out a number of smaller, lighter, individual battery modules. Stellantis claims that this method is much easier, can be done in 5 to 10 minutes, and can be applied to pretty much any vehicle. Rather than having different sized batteries for smaller or larger cars, you can simply change the number of battery modules you install. Stellantis says that this approach simplifies installation. This technology will likely not be rolled out in a large scale for some time. Ample is currently testing the viability of this idea in a small pilot program in Spain using a small fleet of custom Fiat 500Es. If this program succeeds, we may see this tech roll out to other Stellantis vehicles worldwide. If not, this tech could just be a footnote for the company, like it was for Tesla. When we consider increasing charging speeds, better battery technology, and the fact that better battery integration into a vehicle helps with production, I don't think this is going to succeed, but we'll have to wait and see. It does seem like a very cool idea if it were viable down the road. Over at GM, while they've confirmed that the Chevy Bolt will be making its return on their Ultium platform, it won't be in quite the same way that we were hoping for. The Bolt was originally introduced back in 2016 and has been Chevy's best-selling electric vehicle ever since. It was a smaller sized hatchback and was especially popular for those who didn't want to drive a large vehicle. In 2021, Chevy introduced the Bolt EUV, short for Electric Utility Vehicle. This vehicle took the successful Bolt formula and applied it to a larger SUV-like form factor, but that did come, of course, at a higher price. With the introduction of GM's Ultium EV platform, a lot of Bolt enthusiasts were excited when it was announced that this car could be receiving an updated version. However, we're just learning that update will only be coming to the EUV version. This was a disappointing move for a lot of people who were excited to see the continuation of one of the few smaller sized electric cars on the market. In the US, SUV sales reign supreme, comprising 64% of the EV market. This seems to be a prudent move by Chevy, trying to release a promising car in the largest possible market segment. But still, fans of smaller cars will surely be disappointed. Perhaps an Ultium based Bolt EV will come in the future, but for now, the EUV will be their only option. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see how and why the tax credit is disappearing for the Model 3, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.